In this session, we'll talk about file and directory functions in VBA. There are nine uh, file handling functions in VBA. So the first one is current directory function. The syntax is very simple. We just need to pass on the drive character as argument. So every uh, drive has one default directory set which we can check by specifying the drive name here in the function and let's say if I want to display this in a message box so the current directory set for drive C is this I can check it for other drives also if you want to change the default directory we have a specific function change directory function Again, it holds one argument. You just need to specify the path which you want to set using this. Now next time when you check the current directory of the same drive, you will see the updated value here. Also if we do not specify the drive character here, and we check the current directory without specifying the directory it will be picking up the directory of default drive so by default C is the def uh, drive which is selected here and if you want to change the drive we have a specific function for it so the function is change drive again the argument is just the drive letter so if you want to set the default drive to D you can set it like this and the next time when you display current drive or current directory of that drive it will give you the default uh, directory of that drive the next important function is directory function which is mainly used to list down all the files or specific files from a folder so the arguments are, so the first argument is the path and the second argument may be a list of attributes which we need to specify here. So we have a list of attributes which are already defined in VB uh, language. So you can check it out here in the list. So let's say in a specific directory I want to list down all the files and I want to print those in Excel. Then I need to specify that path name here as the first argument. You can see here these all arguments are optional because you can see here in the square brackets. So you need, these arguments are not mandatory and will picking the default value of these at attributes. But let's say you specify the first argument here as a path name. For example, if I specify this path and I have 16 xls files here and I put star dot xls and I do not specify any other argument I save this value in a variable and if I display on console like this So it prints the first file. Next time when I do directory, when I hit the directory without even specifying the path, it will give me the second file. 
Similarly, if I keep on repeating this statement, it will help me in uh, printing all the files in that directory. Just to make it simple because you do not know the count of files in a uh, in a folder, you can use a check which will help you in iterating through all the files in that directory. So what we can do is, we can put a do loop here and you can specify that if the variable a which we have used here, see if we find any files in this directory with the extension xlsm the value of a would be the file name but if it returns null character or you can say a null string in that case the length of this variable would be zero so we can put a check here that length of this variable a if this is greater than zero this loop should get repeated and it should print on console the value of a and the value of a should get changed on every iteration so the statement will keep on repeating until it finds a file with the matching criteria if it does not find anything it will just move out of the loop and you will uh, see that uh, it pr it will print all the files in that directory following the match So we have a list of all the 16 files here. This logic was used to list down all the files in one directory. But let's say we have inner directories also. So we need to put another check of first of all uh, iterating through all the directories and make our code navigate through all the directories one inside other and then list down all the files. So we'll be requiring nesting of loops in, the, in these statements. We'll be talking about nesting or the simple loops in the next tutorial. And then we'll, pick, uh, we'll be picking up the same example. Uh, next function is file date time. And then we'll be talking about file length. So these functions are straight away. We just need to specify the file path as argument and we'll get the relevant information. Let's say I display this thing on a message box and I want to check the file size or maybe the file length. Or even the last uh, modified date time, I can directly use the function file date time for this and file length for the size So you can check here, this file was uh, last modified uh, at uh, this uh, time and date. And when we run this, we'll see the output. Uh, it is the same time which was uh, reflecting there uh, in the details of the file. And if you check the size of file and if we click OK here, you will see it is uh, displaying the size here 11, uh, which is uh, in bytes. Here it is uh, displaying the file size in kilobytes, but uh, this function always returns uh, the size of file in bytes. You can uh, further convert that uh, into uh, maybe kilobytes or megabytes depending on your requirement. The next function is get attribute function. Again, there is one argument you just need to specify the path it may be a folder it may be a file it may be a system file or it may be a archive file so we have uh, a list of output uh, which this function can return so this function always uh, return uh, either 0 1 2 4 16 32 or 64 as a value or as a output now there is a specific meaning of all these values if it returns 0 
that means that is a normal path if it returns 1 that means that file or that directory is read only similarly if uh, if it returns 2 as output that means that file is having a hidden proper property set if it returns 4 it is a system file if you specify the argument as a folder or a directory it will be returning 16 always and if it is an archive you will be getting 32 as output and if that file has an alias name you will be getting 64 as output in any other case you will be getting a system error so let us check I am specifying the folder path here so since I am uh, putting a uh, folder path here as argument I should get 16 as output when I run this you will get 16 now let us uh, try it for a file let's say we uh, give the path of this file name now this is a normal file let us change one of the properties of this file manually by going here and let's say we set it uh, to read only first of all now you're getting 33 as output now see uh, in the list uh, which uh, we have provided here you do not uh, uh, see 33 as output value but uh, it, it is returning 33 because that file is archived and the file is read only so it is fulfilling two criteria that's why it is returning some of the two values so if uh, there is one more case let's say if that file is uh, read only as well as it is hidden and since that file is archived you should be getting 32 plus 2 plus 1 that output should be 35 let us uh, check this by simply changing another attribute to hidden let's read on the code now the output is 35 so that is why uh, these values were specifically chosen so that even if you have multiple properties set you will get some as output and uh, there are no uh, 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 duplicate combinations which uh, can give you same result or same sum value uh, for 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 any property set so always uh, the sum would be different uh, if you have multiple properties set the same list would be uh, used in the other uh, functions also like if you want to set specifically an attribute using uh, VBA command line you can also set here we were just reading that value if you want to let's say change uh, uh, a file normal file to a read only file or maybe let's say a hidden file you can set it using set attribute function you just need two arguments one is uh, the path of that file and the second argument is the value which we are getting here as input as output of this function so we'll we'll see that function uh, here let's say I change the properties of this particular file so that's how you can change the property of a file using this function if you want to set multiple properties what you can do is as a second argument you can use plus and then you can specify multiple properties so we be hidden plus we be uh, we be read only we'll make two changes in that file and the next time when you will try to read them uh, you will get an updated value and you can also check uh, by uh, right clicking on that file and check on properties you will see that th the property which you have set using set attribute function would be uh, the updated uh, updated with uh, that new value 
the last function in this category is uh, make directory function at times you need to create directories where you put files so for that uh, there is a simple function like in DOS and other uh, languages you can use um, uh, make directory function and uh, specify the path to create a new directory in that uh, location maybe it is a drive location or it may be a directory so you can create sub directories as well as uh, directories in a parent uh, drive so the command is very simple make directory if let's say you want to create a directory in C just put on the path of C drive it will create a directory with a new name in that location Thank you for watching this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we'll uh, walk you through uh, loop statements and we'll see uh, some examples uh, uh, using loop statements.